For many of us, Maundy Thursday is marked by a service of Holy Communion as we enter into the meal at the heart of Christian worship, remembering Jesus for sharing it with his disciples and friends. But this year, with COVID-19 restrictions, in the Methodist Church at least, we are not able to gather around the table and share bread and wine. It's true that some United Methodist Church conferences, including Denmark, Switzerland, Germany and the Caribbean, and some other Christian churches in the UK, the Baptist and the United Reformed Church, have given special permissions to hold online communion. But the Methodist Church here in the country has already made a call that we are not to host online Holy Communion and have set up a group of folk to look into and explore this as a future possibility. This, of course, has implications for our ecumenical relations and partnerships. Rather than being impatient or frustrated about not having bread and wine this week, maybe it would help us to ponder the following. As Methodists, We covenant ourselves with God through prayer each year, including the lines, when I am troubled and when I am at peace, when I find fulfilment and when it's lacking, when I have all things and when I have nothing. In these troubled times, some things are lacking and felt as if they leave us with nothing. When one part of the body suffers, all parts of the body suffer together, wrote St Paul. Our Holy Communion deprivation during COVID-19 is an act of sharing and solidarity with all that is missing and lost at this time. In the previous chapter of his first letter to the church in Corinth, Paul had challenged the Christians there to think far more carefully about their practice of the Lord's Supper. He wrote this. Now in the following instructions, I do not commend you, because when you come together, it's not for the better, but for the worse. For to begin with, when you come together as a church, I hear that there are divisions among you, and to some extent I believe it. Indeed, there have to be factions among you, for only so will it become clear who among you are genuine. When you come together, it is not really to eat the Lord's Supper. For when the time comes to eat, each of you goes ahead with your own supper, and one goes hungry and the other becomes drunk. What? Do you not have homes to eat and drink in? Or do you show contempt for the church of God and humiliate those who have nothing? What should I say to you? Should I commend you? In this matter I do not commend you. For I received from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus on the night when he was betrayed took a loaf of bread, and when he'd given thanks he broke it and said, This is my body that is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way he took the cup also after supper, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Whoever therefore eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be answerable for the body and blood of the Lord. Examine yourselves and only then eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For all who eat and drink without discerning the body eat and drink judgment against themselves. For this reason, many of you are weak and ill and some have died. But if we judged ourselves, we would not be judged. But when we are judged by the Lord, we are disciplined so that we may not be condemned along with the world. So then, my brothers and sisters, when you come together to eat, wait for one another. What you see in this painting of the Last Supper by Catholic priest and artist Sega Coda. Note how the painting gets darker at the far end of the table and room. That's where the shadows are. So where is the light coming from? Look at the disciples' faces around the table, up the left-hand side, in blue, holding bread. A green arm reaching out for some. Is that next person asleep or praying? At the top of the table, only one disciple sees somebody else leaving. Do you see that disciple slipping out through the doorway into the dark? Who might that person be? Up the right-hand side of the table, in red, touching bread with eyes closed, deep in prayer and presence. Can you see the hand on the back of the next disciple? offering comfort and togetherness. 
And where is Jesus in this picture? At the head of the table, holding out his hands, one round the cup, one passing on bread. And can you see Jesus' face reflected in the wine? Is the artist trying to tell us something? As we look at the painting, we stand where Jesus is sat, head of the table, looking down. Are we being reminded that as those who take bread and wine, Christ is in us and we are in Christ? Because he took our place, we find ourselves in his.